Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cosmos with Cosmos. I'm Liz. I'm Mike. And I'm jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> Is that naming your drink? Oh, it should be. That's a good drink <laughs> drink name. And this it is, is a, actually that's solid. <laughs> and this is another edition of High in the Sky. Where High we, in the uh, Sky. Talk about what's uh, coming up in the night sky in the uh, next month, really kind of in April since March is uh, winding down. Um, and some astronomy news, and then we'll just shoot the shit and see what goes on. I think we should talk about houses. You talk about houses? Oh my god. Houses. This past dilemma. Anyway, uh, also, my sister is on the way uh, over from Portland yeah. uh, for a visit. She should arrive in about an hour, so there may be a little bit of hoopla. Uh, Chaos. Uh, so prepare, be prepared to take a drink uh, when the dogs bark there, but we'll get into the rules in a second. Speaking of drinks, it is Cosmos with Cosmos. Uh, what you drinking there, Mike? I am drinking uh, VHS 1256B. Hey, sounds VHS, like, going back to the... Sounds like a really bad 80s movie. It does. It does. Oh, I mean, there is that horror movie that's called VHS. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's from But it was like V and then like something. Slash H yeah, slash S, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this has uh, orange juice in it. It also mm-hmm. has vanilla vodka um, mm-hmm. and um, cardamom in, infused simple syrup. How how is that? It's really not bad, and oh. so I misjudged. Um, okay, so I put in like I normally do. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I I guess I put in too much ice, and so the 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 level of the alcohol mix was pretty high. Oh, this and is not have much not much on the mixer. So it's 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 really and truly is vodka uh, with a little simple syrup <laughs> and orange <laughs> juice. Just drinking vodka today. That's all I got. What are, you, what are you drinking? Oh, oh, I am crap. I didn't think of a drink name. Dirty Snowball? No, I've already used that one. Mm. All right. Then, anyway, Brandon, I'm... what are you drinking? Well, <laughs> well, well, let me think Jesus. about it. Let me think about it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go really um, slow, so Brandon. I do not have a fancy drink name, uh, but I do have a rum from India that you can only buy in India, which is kind of fun. It's called Old Muck. Um, Old Muck. Old Monk. Now, the story from what I can gather um, where Old Monk came from, this name behind it, is that in the, I think, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, there was some kind of massacre thanks to the British colonialism. And then a monk came by and somehow managed to kill or get the British out of there and in that land set up a uh, distillery or something like that. And now they make uh, rum there. Wow. I didn't know the monks were so boozy. Oh, God, yeah, they yeah. are. I they mean, I guess wine. that's the only way they, they can get all through stuff. the whole, you know, their monk life. Yeah, so. Yes. Hashtag yeah. monk life. Hashtag monk life. <laughs> no monks will see that hashtag monk life. <laughs> uh, but this, this is the last bit of it I have. So uh, that's well, good. I think I think it should be called uh, jet lag. I mean, seriously. Jet that's what, yeah, that's what it's it jet lagged. It's jet lagged. Uh, I am drinking a Venus drop. Hey, mm. it is uh, vodka, limoncello, uh, simple syrup, and mm. some lemon juice. Yes. Yeah. So it's a Venus drop, which is a play yeah. on lemon drop. Yeah. And also, sorry, it, this is actually phenomenal rub. This is really is good. I, think, I forgot how good it was. And you're drinking it straight? Uh, I, cut with a bit, I cut with a bit of water. Okay, so okay. pretty much straight. So pretty much straight, yeah. And Let's Jack's see. got uh, raspberry mocha that is a brew and... Oh, after after you clear the driveway of some ice, driveway off of ice or ice off the drive. Yeah, I haven't even had any alcohol yet, and I already don't know. Yeah, we had a drive in some snow yesterday that was crazy. We got some pretty good snow here today. This this morning, it's coming down real hard. Wow, man, the weather's been wild this weekend. We have been through rain and snow and hail and more snow and sunshine and rain. So there that. wasn't any hail, but there was a lot of well, it snow. was like little hail. It was like little ice ball hail. Little fire oh, balls. I, I, yeah. I was in a really good thunderstorm in Delhi, the kind where like the lightning would go from one end of the sky all the way to the other oh. in a single bolt. It was really cool. That's cool. That's cool. You know what? I haven't even tasted my drink yet. All right. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, oh, okay. I am the host of this show. This right. Hostess Mostess. Host of this episode, everybody. All right. Well, we got our drinks in. So, uh, of course, follow us on all the things on Twitter at Drinking Cosmos. Everywhere else, Cosmos with Cosmos. And you can listen to the episodes on Spotify, Anchor.fm, or Google, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Or you can just watch the shenanigans on 
you two. Uh, yeah. And you can see our wonderful faces. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, we have some friends out there that are doing uh, some great stuff. Like my sister, fantastic artist. You can uh, check her out on Etsy, Wild IXIA. Uh, our good buddy, Ron Proctor, Mr. Proctor Show. I can't remember the name of his new website or his new thing that I, he's I, doing. Yeah. Um, and then Jack at RollingBluffsPlanetarium.com. You can see what he's doing if you're in the uh, Iowa, Nebraska area of the uh, Midwest and hanging out in that uh neck of the u.s woods so to speak and of course we have some drinking rules uh slash i guess it's really a game you know if some dogs bark take a drink highly likely in this episode my sister actually uh, arrives if we make any star wars or lord of the rings references because we are nerds and especially because brandon's on the show today uh take a drink as well but for now uh, let's get high with drinks <laughs> in the sky and see what's let's up do here. It. Yeah, we're end of March, uh, coming into April. It's officially spring, even though it does not feel like it outside. Yeah, the weather with all the snow wacky. that uh, that we have endured. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's been crazy ass weather. It, it's been a while, but but technically it's spring, uh, so we have our wintertime constellations that are on the way out. They're saying goodbye: Taurus, uh, Orion, uh, Siri, uh, Canis Major, which has Sirius in it, the brightest uh, star in the nighttime sky. Uh, they're they're setting early in the west now, earlier and earlier I don't want until. Them to set. Huh? I don't want them to say. I know those are the. I was always the, when we lived ones. in Phoenix. I was always sad to see Orion well, go. Yeah, that's I mean, a billion uh, degree yeah. days are coming. That's yeah, that means. was nice. Uh, so uh, speaking in the sky. So a couple weeks ago, I was in Colombia and I went out and went to see. Yeah, yeah, the country, not not the the one here. Um, <laughs> and I, I went out and went to go find north. So where's Polaris? Oh. Oh right, you're in the wrong, <laughs> you're in the wrong hemisphere. You're pretty much the well, there. Oh, but uh, Columbia, I think, uh, split. So I think oh, it's it because it's closer to the equator. Yeah, I think it's got a little bit I above and a little bit below. Were you uh, were you above or below? Uh, below, I think. Oh yeah, there's there's no. Wow. But even if you were at the equator, it's like the North Star. So you could be. get like, but you get like, then you did you try to look for any like microscopium or telescopium? Large and small magellanic clouds. Ho- what's um, the Horolux or whatever? I don't so know. remember how much how many stars we got in Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, like divide four? that by like a half. Okay, so, so two. two. All right, all right. So yeah. lots of light pollution. That is what we're saying. Okay. Back in like 2011, whatever, I went to uh, New Zealand, mm-hmm. and um, so I get there and I have to go to a War of the Worlds meeting. Ah, uh, the worst. And oh, so geez, those production meetings. So oh. I so I did that, and I was like, all right, I am so tired. I'm gonna go back to the the hotel. Mm-hmm. But the uh, but the plan was for like the next night to go to the observatory um at at the place uh stardom observatory and uh on one tree hill and uh it was cloudy for the next two weeks i was Uh, not able to see the large and small magellanic clouds or anything like that so worse i'm gonna i'm gonna keep derailing this conversation unless liz takes us back yeah Yeah, speaking of the northern hemisphere sky (laughs) Uh, again, wintertime constellations are, uh, uh, trying to be quiet, set my drink down there, are on the way out. So Sirius, the brightest star in the nighttime sky, is setting in the southwest. Um, and and uh, conversely, uh, the two brightest stars in the sky uh, are Taurus, springtime star in the constellation of Bootes. The bear herder. Oh, is after after Sirius sets. After as, as Sirius is setting, Arcturus okay, okay, uh, okay, is going you. to be right. rising in uh, in the east. So those are two of the brightest stars in the sky during this Booty? time right now. Uh huh. Arcturus and B- Booties. 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 And it's uh, in the sky. Sirius is going to be like like a bright a whitish star to your eyes, and Arcturus is going to be a bright reddish star. Arcturus. 
Yes, yes, art doors. Yes, yes. Uh, I had because in my head, I can't. our springtime constellations uh, rising in the east during late evening now. All right, and a couple other ones of those are Lyra the harp. Uh, it kind of looks like like a uh, like a Jesus fish uh, in the sky. Like a what? Like a a goldfish. Jesus fish. That's the best way I can describe, fish. like, the, you know. Like, I always think of it as like, a tie. That's how I draw fish, is like, you know. The yeah, I don't think it was the... Jesus fish, though. I just think it was stick figure fish. But, but yeah, but I think a visualization, everybody knows what the Jesus fish looks like. That's right? not true. Well, there are a, <laughs> Most lot, people there are a know... lot of cars in Utah. About where I just came from. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's, that's fair. All right, fair. so. Uh, I've lost swastikas there, though. But the that's not, yeah, the, the good, good kind of swa- the the not culturally appropriated swastikas, uh, and Gemini, the twins, Castor uh, and, Pollux. and Pollux, which are the brightest, uh, the two main stars in uh, Gemini. So those are rising. And again, uh, for those of you who are looking at the night sky and you're like, what are these things? You can download uh, sky maps for your cell phone where you can just point your phone at the sky and it'll show you what yeah. you're looking at. And yes, I, mom, I know I need to help you with yours. So you can, get we should actually, uh, create our own little sky charts and have them for people. It'd be it sounds easy difficult. To oh, <laughs> no, I mean, we, Brandon, you and I work for a company that makes software that can show it. So uh, you don't I don't know why I was app, thinking like creating app. our own programs to track things when no. we just have it at our fingertips, right? <laughs> yeah. I um, have so. it right over there. <laughs> yes, what do you do for a living? It's <laughs> a good question. I know what I'm doing Monday instead of working. <gasps> Making some sky what are you doing? Charts. Making sky charts. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Boaties, by the way, being the bear herder, uh the wait a minute he heard bears yeah he herds bears so that means what? he's herding herd bears? the big and little bears canis major and canis major which are in the northern part of the sky uh which can be seen all year round depending on your latitude in the northern hemisphere uh, uh around the sky and that's how he got his name because he's near how them well does herding bears work out and I was going to say, besides Botes, how many bear herders exist? I don't know. Barely. I mean, there was one, and then there was none. I, mean, I wonder I guess, why. I Herding guess bears. ask uh, <laughs> the Ringling Brothers. Can you imagine, bears? like, <laughs> old, old, old Booties goes home to his wife and goes, hey, um, I have a new job lined up. I'm going to herd bears. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he quickly died after that, but, you know. <laughs> well, I don't I know. know. Maybe there's it was the like... opposite. The opposite of bear herder in like Scandinavian countries. There was a job posting a couple years ago. Uh, we're going out to a small town and just walking around in a cart with a rifle and shooting when the polar bear comes to scare the polar bears away. Oh, but you can't, yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of have can't to do that. Polar bears because they no. just eat you. And they're also in, so, like endangered. Right? Yeah, but they just oh, eat very you. much. One so. guy's not going to do it. No, no. And they're starving. They're starving. So, so that, that is anti bear herder though. Uh, Jack says, modern bear hunters are a wild thing that will take this stream to a very dark place. Yeah, we don't need to think about uh, uh, bear hunters. Let's just think Here about- I am going to the Hundred Acre Woods yet again. <laughs> 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 Boaties, uh, you can find our tourists actually by using uh, the Big Dipper and the handle of the Big Dipper. Uh, the Big Dipper, a very recognizable uh, asterism, uh, meaning that it's a shape we make up that's a part of an official constellation, such as Ursa Major, which is what the Big Dipper is a part of. And its handle, uh, the end of its handle tip actually will point straight to Arcturus. Yeah, yeah. Arc to Arcturus. Arc to Arcturus. Spica. Uh, Spica being in the constellation of Virgo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is not up, up quite yet. Uh, but, but it is a springtime one, though. It is a springtime come. I went up yet, but it's going to be up like, like way later and further in the into southeast, spring. In the and Virgo is one of those constellations that has fairly dim stars, so in any light polluted area, you're not really going to see it. Whereas Boaties, uh, you should be able to at least make out. It kind of looks like an ice cream cone, yeah, uh, in the sky. Uh, and ice cream cone with visible. little feet. <laughs> Little walkable ice cream. Little cone. feeties. Little, little booty. Little, little booties. Little booties on booties. <laughs> I was right there. We missed it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Federico, oh by the God. way, bear meat tastes good. All right. Um, I mean, I can. I mean, I would assume. I, I mean, we had that. reindeer. 
Well, we, we did went have to reindeer uh, Alaska. Alaska. Yeah, uh, caribou. We didn't have caribou. um, we didn't we didn't have the northern lights, we but we know, we did have cloudy, reindeer. And we didn't pick the. It was right good, and my dad goat. loves reindeer from the time that he was in Norway, stationed oh. in Norway for a year. Wow. Apparently, some little old lady. Like the little old tea lady in India, the little old lady. Oh, but tea instead people. of tea, he got like reindeer he got meat. Got reindeer <laughs> meat. Would you like some reindeer meat? Uh, hanging out with the constellations in the sky are some planets, of course. Good old, good old planets of the solar system. Just uh, you know, driving along the ecliptic, the path of our solar system across <laughs> the sky. Little, They're just in their little the Saturn cars. They're one of those little old Saturn cars. <laughs> Saturn drives a Saturn. What, what would Jupiter drive? <laughs> oh, Jupiter a Jeep. would, would drive a something big, though. Maybe. Oh, so uh, what, what, what's what's that like, big like military? I don't know. I see, Humvees. Although I do kind of Hummers. Maybe Jupiter. Maybe Jupiter would be like an old like Volkswagen like ca- like wagon like camper. <laughs> they can like barely fit yeah. into. <laughs> no, J- Jupiter's in like a Mini Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> this was a weird. You know what I love on. about the planets is that they um, predict our future. They're what? Predict our future planets our no, personality we're not there yet on iran but no they don't um okay so well, that's 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 debatable is <laughs> in the evening sky uh jupiter and mercury they're going to be very low uh above the uh, uh horizon in the early evening the eastern horizon in the early evening uh and uh april 21st through may 14th uh mercury will be in retro oh, brandon all right what Can happened? anyone in the chat hear that clicking, or is it just me going insane? It's gone now. God damn it! It's, your, it's <laughs> you. It's it's your. Fault. Yeah, put it in the chat if you if, uh, you're if you hear weird you. clicking. Then. So he like disappeared for a well, second. Well, I'm like unplugging things, trying to figure this what out. You're being haunted. Uh, I don't know. What did you bring home with you from your travels? Uh, uh, speaking of things that aren't real, uh, Mercury uh, will be uh, going in retrograde motion. Okay, so it's Mercury. I wasn't sure from the notes if that was Mercury or Jupiter. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Mercury is going into retrograde. What does this mean to you? Absolutely nothing. It's an optical illusion. Uh, what retrograde oh. is, is it, 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 the planets appear to move backwards in the skies from our perspective it's kind of like when you're driving on the highway and you are moving faster than a car next to you that car appears to move backwards uh sort of thing and well, vice yeah, versa but, but just like the car can uh mercury can also impact how i feel no. so it makes sense yes, if the car cuts yeah. me off i get angry but so that's yeah. because of mars that's because of mars mars it's, mars uh, makes you angry uh, Makes you want to break things. No, it's Mars it's, is the punk of the. It's not world. actually moving backwards. It doesn't care about you. It has no effect on your life because uh, astrology is not science. Mercury but if you want to, if you, you want to feel, you know, if you want to feel things about it, you can. If you want to f- see it as a good sign, a bad sign, you can. That's up to you. But in reality, in in science. Venus uh, <laughs> is in the constellation of Aries, which is a dim constellation, another springtime constellation that's coming up. It's Aries the Ram. Uh, and of course, you'll notice that these constellations that I'm talking about are uh, also sounding familiar as zodiac constellations. These are the constellations that fall along that ecliptic, the path of our sun across the sky, aka the plane of our solar system. So the planets travel through them, meaningless to your everyday life. <laughs> Uh, but Venus... I'm going to take a drink now every time it is. <laughs> Venus, very bright in the sky. is the second brightest object in the nighttime sky after the moon. Uh, and it will be uh, visible 45 minutes after sunset at the beginning of April. Uh, and then it'll move closer to Taurus, meaning closer to the, the western horizon setting earlier and earlier by the end of the month. So Taurus is going to be getting lower and lower on the horizon, being a wintertime constellation. And Venus is going to kind of follow it out of scene, uh, essentially, as oh. we, uh, you know, follow it off stage. Yeah, it's like, I'm out, see so, ya. To, so to speak. Uh, Mars is hanging out uh, with the twins, with Gemini. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, you know, um, it is going to be kind of like to the upper left of Venus, about uh, four or five fists. So if you put your fists up at the sky, uh, you find Venus, go about four or five to the four upper five left of it. Beatles. Yeah, and then you'll uh, you'll see this red bright object, and that will be good old uh, God of War Mars hanging out there. Oh, Aries. Old Aries. Good Mars. old Aries. 
in the morning hours, if you're up in the wee early morning hours uh, like we sunrise. are yes before, like we are every weekday uh saturn will be near the horizon i love um, how you say weekday when it's every day at five yeah, o'clock we can go back to sleep now. on weekends we can go back to sleep on the weekends it's um, true. Very true. saturn is near the horizon in mid-april in the constellation of aquarius the, the water age bear. of aquarius the water oh I I heard water bear because we're talking about bears, so my mind is it's a, it's on a, bears, it's but a it's a the water. bearer. So yeah. water tardigrade. He's it's the tardigrade. water water bearer. Yeah, he's a tardigrade. He's a tardigrade in the sky. It's the water bearer to the gods. I can't remember what was Aquarius' story. It was like a um, God. I can't remember. I don't know. It, it, he got it's like such this a dumb honor constellation. of it becoming the water bearer to the gods. Um, a water boy. The water, basically, basically the all water the constellations boy. that have like uh, water uh-huh. associated with them, dim. They're just dim. I don't. I don't. Cancer, uh, Aquarius, dumb all those guys. Constellations, just Pisces. Dumb, yeah, all of them are dim. Dumb fish. But I mean, clearly, it was bright enough for like uh, in ancient times where people were like, yeah, it's fish. Yeah, fish. because you know what they didn't. You know what they didn't have in ancient times? City Light lights. Pollution. <laughs> Well, that's because the aliens didn't give them the technology yet. That's true. That's true. It's common sense. We need the aliens to, to come in here. Some celestial events that are coming up in April. Uh, the full moon on April 6th is not just any ordinary full moon, but at the same time, it is just an ordinary full moon. That's no ordinary moon. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 I got to take a drink, right? Star, that, Star Wars reference? Definitely Star Wars reference. That was well done. That was good. Good job. <laughs> that was good. Welcome back to the show, Brandon. Uh, it is the pink moon. The pink full moon. Uh, and this, it's not pink. Okay? Don't expect a pink moon, which would be, unless you're wearing, like, you this know, is, this is pink a full moon for girls. glasses. It's for girls. It's a girl moon. I've uh, never heard of a pink moon. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, it's also called in the Southern Barely Hemisphere. Barely every April. In the Southern Hemisphere, it is. It's called the Harvest Moon and the Hunter's Moon, which may be more familiar. But um, this is a Native American name for it. Uh, It is to represent the color of wild ground phlox, spelled P-H-L-O-X. What is that? Uh, It's one of the earliest flowers to bloom in April. And I guess it's a pink color. And so the Native Americans, when the full moon in April happened, phlox, uh, they call it the pink moon. Uh, but other other cultures have different names for it. So in Chinese, it's the peony moon, after the flowers. Uh, in in uh, Celtic, uh, it's the growing moon. Uh, the the witches for those Wiccans out there, uh, it's the seed moon. Uh, and Cherokee, I uh, see it as the flower moon. Which is flock, right? So it does seem to oh, have. Flocks, it is. does seems to have. Oh uh, shit, that's pretty. Are they pretty? It's pretty. Um, right, well, yeah, it's a it's a purple are... flower. I no, think, there's there's some pink in it. Yeah, I, I know, think those cool. are all peony growing sea moons. I think those are all like the B team of the. Um... Oh, I just had the joke and it went through oh, my fingers. I'm no. so tired. Oh, give me a second. No. Give, give me like five seconds. You even you can even count down. Um, <laughs> it it seems like there's it's, some fertility. It's the B basis. squad of the Sailor Moons. It's the B squad of the it's Sailor Moons. Right <laughs> yeah. That, oh, yeah. Wow. And I don't think next it was time, worth it. Yeah. I don't know if it was worth no, it. I, I, I'm no, I'm not doing things today. No. Uh, <laughs> another celestial event uh, coming up is a hybrid solar oh, eclipse. I drive oh, one of cool. those. Uh, you saw one? Wait, no, what? I drive one of those. A hybrid. Oh. <laughs> but not a solar <laughs> eclipse. Uh, we, in the uh, where we're located here in the northern uh, hemisphere of the Americas, um, we're not going to see it. Uh, it's going to be really visible, uh, basically in the uh, Indian and, and North Pacific oceans. Well, I mean, clearly somebody who watches this podcast uh, maybe. Too, but... Uh, but what's what's really? I've never heard of a hybrid solar eclipse before. Um, and so what it does is it basically the the it changes from annular to total and vice versa along its path. All right. So Whoa. annular and okay. Which is so wild. all right. First of all, first of all, real quick. Yes, uh, the moon um, oh, is, is used to a, calculate Easter time. Is this time. the magic Easter moon? Yeah, so it's the first. It's the first Sunday after the first full moon after 
the first day of spring um, is when Easter occurred. So they didn't even get the date when... Literally. Jesus. Yeah. All right. So, uh, but anyway, Something yeah. So annular eclipse is where the moon is just a little too far away. And, and so it looks like a ring of fire yeah. around the moon. So it's a ring of fire eclipse. But this is just one of those things where this is one of those times. And like you said, it's very rare mm -hmm. where the moon starts out just a little too far away mm -hmm. and so you get that little ring of, it'd be a very thin ring around it um and then it uh during the eclipse it is at a perfect distance where it covers the entire face of the sun and then it goes wait a minute i'm gonna pull a little bit further away and then <laughs> it goes comes... back, which that seems like it would be really cool to see that transition oh, yeah. Uh, by the way take a drink if anybody had this ring of fire song pop in their head as soon as he said ring of fire. has what oh Okay. I did if, not. You, if you had the Ring of Fire song pop in but, your head. But now I have the Social D version in my head. But, oh, but then it becomes, it. all right, so was it the Johnny Cash version or the Social Distortion version? Of the it song? was the Social Distortion because I was thinking Cosmic Coasters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. E either one is just a great version yes. of the song. Yes. It's just, they're phenomenal. <laughs> I, I really love the Johnny Cash with the, with the horns. But uh, but yeah. Social Distortion, really. I mean, Ring I'm a punk, so, you know. Ring of Fire, it's so hot right now. <laughs> all right speaking of uh coming in I hot i fell into oh sorry speaking of coming in hot we got a meteor shower uh, in april the april lyrids uh or lyrids they peak on uh the 23rd of april around the 23rd 24th of april uh not not a wild meteor shower um it's pretty low-key about 18 meteors per hour um is the uh yeah. The hourly rate at 18, 18 yeah, per right. hour. So pretty chill. But if you are in a dark sky area, you know, uh, they go for longer than just the peak. So the the most you can see is on April 23rd. I had another uh, meteor shower listed. The the pupids. Puppets? Pupids. Pupids. Puppets? Pupids. That's in the southern hemisphere, which also peaks uh, the same time as the April Lyrids. So April Lyrids are in the northern hemisphere. The puppets pupids are in the southern hemisphere do you have the the comet that these originate from no but <laughs> the lyrids are called that because they these meteors uh look like they're coming from the direction of lyrid uh, lyra the harp which and is again you what the term fish is called? i don't the radiant Limit. Oh, that was, oh, the, that was ra the, ra the, okay. the radian, the radius, the radiant, the radiant, yeah. right? The radiant. It, it radiates. Right. It radiates from from the. So, the, all right. so the keep talking. Keep talking. It is uh, well. That's not keeping talking. <laughs> but you know what? I'm putting you on the spot. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to quickly look. Uh, basically, a meteor shower is when the Earth is, usually, <laughs> is when the Earth is passing through the tail of a comet and that debris is getting uh, burnt up in our atmosphere. And for more information on comets, check out our episode on uh, Dirty Snowballs. Dirty Snowballs, yeah. So um, the, the lyrics come from Comet C, 1861, G. Oh, yes. Thatcher. C eighteen thirty one sixty one G one G one Thatcher Thatcher hot yeah <laughs> all right anybody have anything else to add to the night sky coming up in uh, April uh, that's that's beautiful, beautiful. Well, look at it sky how would you add to the night sky uh, uh Brandon I was gonna call you April for some reason <laughs> oh my goodness well let's see so remember the movie Dragonheart. Uh, when Draco the dragon of course dies, his soul is placed into the sky and creates a star. Um, I would love for more honorable creatures to be placed in the sky in that fashion. Oh, so, okay. like, yeah. Oh, no, what what was want. the question? More honorable. Uh, what would you add to the night sky? What would you? And I would add honorable, honorable creatures, creatures to the sky that have since passed. Okay. Okay. I like that. I mean, just really to be to be honest, what I would add to the sky would be just anything that's not fucking Greek or, you know, that were created by white people. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, uh -huh. to be truly honest, uh -huh. um, that it, but also isn't like, uh, like, cause in the, in the, in the eighties, there was, there was this movement to change Orion to like, I don't know, Moses or something. Was there really? Yeah. Really? So Never yeah, about that. yeah, there was, there was a movement. Moses's um, belt. 
Thankfully, not like no. It's like a fly, like a pup, like a P U P P I D. I think. Um, but anyway, he had so there was a movement where, or they wanted to change it to Noah. They, basically, they wanted to change all they of the constellations to, to Judeo Christian uh, uh, constellations. And you know, I I think that the world has enough bigotry as it is, um, and that we don't need to add this extra layer. On, uh, to the constellations and um, and so just let's represent some some other cultures mm-hmm. and that would you know allow some people to really kind of and, and I realize this is hangover territory but um, you know so you're in a planetarium show and you you point out this constellation mm-hmm. uh, but this constell let's say Orion but uh, instead of, of, of being Orion it's like something like I don't know uh, from India, mm-hmm. and um, and then that kind of opens the eyes to people to different mm-hmm. cultures. And if there's anything the world needs right now, it's just the tolerance. The, it's well, love. just it's love. love. Yeah, it's but I mean, respect. but you get that Empathy. love, you get that tolerance by mm-hmm. um, you know seeing other cultures. There's a reason. Um, there's a reason why universities tend to be very progressive and liberal is because you all of a sudden throw these people in with all these other people and all these other cultures Mm -hmm. and experiences life experiences and it forces them to kind of open their eyes a little bit any ideas who you'd make orion what i'd make orion well red Red power ranger i mean shit uh, there's orion is gandalf (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah Oh, Puppets is the rear of a boat. I thought it was one of like the flies oh. in the southern hemisphere or some reason. <laughs> There's yeah. like a fly constellation in the southern <laughs> hemisphere. The rear. Oh, okay. It's the I mean, rear of the Argonauts. Really the and truly. Jason who, Argonauts. Were they drunk off their ass yes. when they said, hey, I'm not it. here in the southern hemisphere. I'm going to. That's a fly. Well, I mean, they went with kind of like what they were, you know. No, it was it was more scientific based than yes. it was. Uh, and I do actually like that. Uh, I do re-based. like you yeah, have microscopium and Telescopium. all of this stuff. But there's a clock constellation. Oh, horologium or, or something. Yeah. Oh, and in Hogwarts uh, Legacy, that was the last constellation I got. Oh really? Yep. Oh nice. Okay, you can look through telescopes and you can you make constellations. <laughs> Brandon anyway. is just looking at like what all the right. hell's. Yeah, so uh, speaking of, you know, not the white representation space, now we have a telescope named after Edwin Hubble. Wait. Um, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that oh, was my segue. All right. Uh, oh, okay, thank you for that. I forgot what was the first. Yeah, uh, that, was my, that was my awkward Speaking segue. of yeah. Hubble, astronomy news. Some recent astronomy news away from the night sky. Um, look, okay, we are American, all right? We can't pronounce shit, Federico. Well, because, Have you heard me do here, you my Italian say? for you? Um, it's atrocious, and I'm sure it's I, I absolutely offensive. love that. That is awesome. <laughs> Pupus? Puppus? Pupus? <laughs> hey, you know what? It's American. Never mind. <laughs> all right. Hubble. Space Telescope. I know that James Webb Space Telescope uh, is, you know, all the all the hubbub around now, but uh, Hubble still, the, the still working. The original hubbub was the Hubble. original hubbub was Hubble. Well, I see what you did there. It's still uh, it's still doing some good work, and it spotted a tiny amorphous amorphous galaxy in the local universe or our local mean? our local club of galaxies like a changeling uh, it basically means like it's not like our galaxy where it has defined spiral arms this is more of kind of like like a diffuse uh f- fuzzy galaxy like not a, no real defined Galactic shape to it snowball. yeah pretty much like that it's Just called that. ugca 307 so fancy it's located 26 million light years from earth here in the constellation of corvus the crow ah uh, the old crow the old corvus the crow the that's old cool. crow oh, oh, um it's like a smuzz a small fuzzy patch of stars um and i guess there's new star formation in it so it's actually by hubble um spotting it it's kind of confirming that these amorphous galaxies um these diffuse dwarf galaxies so smaller galaxies can form uh new stars and it's thought that this galaxy actually orbits the 
large, well-structured sombrero galaxy, which is one of my favorite galaxies. Yeah. Beautiful galaxy. Um, we see it. Google sombrero galaxy. Um, the I can't wait for James Webb images of it, but oh my god, the Hubble images of it. We see it like edge on, so we're seeing the disk of the galaxy edge on, so it looks like a sombrero rim, basically. Uh, and it's and it's super cool. So that's kind of like what our galaxy would look like if we could see it edge on, in essence. Um, and it's a part of this uh, the this uh, what what Hubble capturing the image of it is actually part of a, a survey program called the Every Known Galaxy Survey. The Every Known Nearby Galaxy Survey. What's that? What's that survey supposed to do? It's supposed to survey every known nearby galaxy. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Oh, so see, I thought it was going to be exoplanets. I, that's what I thought. No, it's just, it's it's just galaxy. A, every okay. known nearby galaxy survey. Like, we're like, hey, who are our neighbors? Who's nearby? Let's check well, them out. Let's see what they're doing. Neighbor. Did, are they saying, like, why um, they think that these uh, small galaxies are still able to form sh- new stars? Because uh, I guess they're seeing Jesus. new stars in... What? Oh, I don't know if there's the why yet. Or All right. have, yeah, I mean, because yes. like, I mean, the first thing I would think about with these small galaxies would be that. Uh, all right, so to make a star, you need to have that gas. You need to have the gas and that dust. That gas and dust. That gas and, and dust. So, um, uh, I I would have thought that it would have um, extinguished that like a long time a long time ago. But uh, I mean, cool. Yeah. So That's good, good for you, UGCA three hundred seven. So, what does your mom mean by weird magnetic fields? Uh, maybe weird magnetic fields or cause us. I don't know. Can you refine your question, Pod Mom? And while you do that, we'll go on because Ingenuity, the uh, helicopter rover we have on Mars that uh, was set up there with Perse- the Perseverance rover, um, it nears its fiftieth flight on Mars. Oh. It just had its forty eighth flight. Forty eight flight. Um, it was, uh, first deployed in April, uh, 3rd of 2021, and it was initially just supposed to, like, do a test of 30 days, and, uh, what seems to be a trend with these rovers and stuff we're sending up there, they're lasting a lot longer, uh, than we thought they would, or that we gave them the timelines to that last. That we budgeted for, yeah. That we budgeted <laughs> for, okay, fair enough. Um, look, let it be a little bit more... <laughs> Magical, yes. Um, so it completed its 48th flight uh, and it reached an altitude of 39 feet. Oh, on Mars. nice. So it's, just, like that, it, it's honestly just amazing that A, this helicopter works, works on Mars, yeah. and that B, it lasted through a Martian winter and is still going. It's, yeah, it's, it's honestly just incredible. It's really cool. And if anybody's like, what do you mean that it's amazing that it works? Well, Mars has a much thinner atmosphere. It, and it's very cold. So, yeah. I mean, and the fact that we're harder flying to get a lift. helicopter on another planet. Uh huh. <laughs> Basically, yeah, we're flying a helicopter drone on another planet. What's, what is the, the mission? Was it? No. To or, Mars? No. There was, there's a mission. Maybe Titan, Go Summers? where they were going to have like this huge glider or something that. Oh, uh, that sounds like a Titan. Titan. Thing. That sounds like Titan. Yeah. I think the moon of largest moon of Saturn. For those of you out there, uh, Mom, Pod Mom has refined her question. A magnetic field play a part in the organization of uh, the shape of the galaxy. Uh, she learned on the Science Channel. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh... <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I think uh, uh, she didn't need to cite a source. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we need to encourage always cite your sources. Well, okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. So, and and uh, uh, kids at home, that's a legit source. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I just. <laughs> but what would it, what causes like say uh, so like magnetic fields and stuff allow the um, <laughs> you had missionaries were they. Were they missionaries? Were they the missionaries we're familiar with, Jack? That's beautiful. Um, you know, I was so upset the other day that I did not get to meet the Jehovah's Witnesses that came to this house. Oh, I'm sorry. I really, I'm I wanted sorry. to start very loss. I got the pamphlet, though. Um, they introduced you to Satan. Anyway, uh, what, so like, you know, we have like our galaxy, spiral galaxy, um, and that you have elliptical galaxies that are just big <laughs> clusters of basically stars, you know, but then these diffuse 
smaller galaxies, like why don't they, <laughs> are, do they not have the ability to form a, what, so what? I'm just, I'm, I'm just laughing at Liz with the gesticulation and the ice has melted just enough to it's clinging and clanging on the glass. <laughs> That is, that's the that's the clicking the, you hear. A, what well, is it? AMR, is, yes. AMR, folks. ASMR. ASMR. There you go. Okay, that's good. <laughs> he hates that so much. Ah, uh, seventh day or seventh day? I don't think we've ever had any of those. Anyway. I've never seen a seventh day Adventist. Well, we'll just ignore my question for another um, episode because that will. I already forgot your question. I know. You Something should. to do with magnetic it's fields fine. and the little amorphous galaxies. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, big news hey. Uh, on on Venus. Uh, oh. Venus, uh, yeah. a sister planet to Earth because they're roughly the same size. Ugly However, sister. it is a hellscape, hellscape. of uh, just insane uh, thick atmosphere of um, you know uh, carbon dioxide, sulfuric acid, rain. Uh, it's crushing atmosphere. Cook a pizza. Melting uh, heat. In, in, in a large pizza it's, it's in, in nine seconds it's, on Mars. It's uh, basically what the Earth is approaching. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, we'll be here we don't the check ourselves. It had, a, it had a bit of a, a runaway greenhouse effect. Um, but it had, that's because it had a lot of volcanoes in the past, largely volcanically active. Um, and it was thought that those volcanoes may not be active anymore. They weren't sure if they were, if there was any vulcan, volcanic no. activity. They thought possibly but they didn't have any evidence that's what it is. they didn't have any evidence of volcanic activity until now uh reviews of uh images of venus's service from the magellan spacecraft that were taken in 1991 um nice. have basically shown evidence that uh, venus is still volcanically active there have been some newer lava flows that are seen by comparing images uh from from you it know, was like 1990 right like, I, th I think the first image that they was in 1990 was february of that mm -hmm. year now okay so it, there was an astronomer who it, went through the data yeah so from robert Magellan. harris my correct yes Robert Herrick, he's a planetary scientist at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. Um, he re-examined the 30 plus year old data um, and he presented uh, findings from the data at the 54th Lunar and Planetary Science Conferences in Texas. Um, and two volcanoes, Mott Mons and Aza Sure, say it was Mons. I mean, uh, we got Federico already calling out our pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, he, pod racers. He uh, he noticed that uh, one one volcanic event near Montmans had expanded uh, significantly between the data sets. Um, February and, and October. Yeah, so the October data also had a bright feature that extended from the vent that looked like a possible lava flow. Um, and so uh, Herrick and Scott Hensley, who's a former Magellan radar team member, Magellan spacecraft uses radar. You can't send a spacecraft to this. Well, we've sent a spacecraft to the surface of Venus, captured like a couple shots, and then it melted and died um, in a nutshell and paraphrasing what actually happened. But uh, so we have to use radar from the spacecraft to get through those thick clouds, just like, you know, uh, like sonar. Um, you know, and those yeah. pings, and so they can get an image from what that uh, light you hit the is <laughs> bouncing off of. Uh, and so uh, uh, Scott Hensley, uh, he was a former Magellan Radar team member, and so they use computer modeling to compare the different geologic scenarios um, that could cause a square mild size vent to become misshapen and, and double in size. And the only answer they could come up with was an eruption. Ven oh, okay. The only... It seemed to be like Venus dwarfs. <laughs> Venus dwarfs. They dug too deep. Uh, oh, oh I gotta take a drink. Uh, <sighs> I'm just glad you guys can start Star Wars reference earlier. So I did not. Good. Well, I heard you say something about pod racers, but I mean. Ooh. Oh, that's right. I did catch the pod racing. Um, I but, didn't know what you're uh, talking about because I was trying to do a podcast, Brandon. You know what? Some, somebody well, has to bring the comedic relief once in a while. <laughs> that's <laughs> and just my, get us completely off track. It's supposed to be my job, but I'm hosting. <laughs> and then Brandon and I just take us off course. Like I can tell Jack, you know what you need is just a picture of two, in your window of two guys kissing. That will that will get rid of the um, Jesus and Moses anybody showing up at your door. <laughs> 
to talk about Jesus. Um, so cool. So Venus. Well, had, uh, at least back in the nineties. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty 90s. sure that it. I'm pretty sure Venus it's didn't still... go. 1991. I'm done. <laughs> I have. I have erupted enough. New, new I, year, new Venus. I am taking a, a lifestyle of pacifism. Yeah. Or however you say it. Uh, Mom, you don't have to put Leia in the crate. It's fine. <laughs> what? My mom texted me asking if she wanted us to put Leia in the crate. Or her, her to put Leia in the crate. It's no, fine. I have them blocked off. Um, not they've opened the gate. No, for when Katie comes. They yeah. have the them gates. blocked off in case they've opened oh, the gate. Oh, they're blocked up. They're blocked up. Okay. Um, um, anyway, uh, so good for Venus. Yay. Yeah, so hot. Uh, yeah, sure. Another uh, uh, news involves um, another news. Another news <laughs> involves an asteroid. An Ooh. asteroid Ryugu. Hopefully, my Japanese pronunciation is better than my uh, Latin and Italian pronunciation. Federico, let you know. So we had uh, there was um, we were able to get samples of uh, Ryugu. Uh, and and analyze them, uh, bring them back from this asteroid. Uh, so it's not like these samples were something that had landed on Earth and then we're studying them, which can cause, you know, there's always a factor of, well, how much Earth contamination could be in them. Um, these were collected directly from the asteroid, and the samples show uh, that they contain uracil, which is a key component of RNA. Nice. Um, So basically that adds weight to the current theory that basic organic molecules may have arrived on Earth from outer space. We're all aliens. Panspermia. 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 Uh, So basically RNA is used for making proteins and and doing other odd jobs inside cells. Mitochondrial DNA. Um, And so like, just like uh, DNA uh, is made a long string of bases, but um, instead of thymine, which DNA has, it has uracil, uh, which is what turned up in the sample. So um, it, this asteroid is a C type or carbonaceous asteroid, which is one of the most common asteroids, uh, that are out there. It makes up 75% of the asteroids that we see. And in the early solar system, as, uh, uh there's a lot of debris still flying around hitting, uh, the hell out of earth. The earth is just getting pounded by all this debris, um, being, hitting the hell out being of it. pounded and seeded. Uh, by these asteroids. Is that the official astronomy term? Hitting the hell out of? Hitting the hell out of, yep. The, the, the period yes. of great bombardment, also known as... The, hitting the hell out of. Hitting the hell out of. The, the heavy Latin bombardment Latin. period, a.k.a. hitting the hell out of. Hitting the hell out of. <laughs> <laughs> Only here in Cosmos of Cosmos, everybody. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so just more evidence that says, you know, uh, the components necessary for life, you know, was just came from it's not like the earth was just like i got life on me it, I, it, 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 came, in, life. it came in from somewhere uh it was seated and of but course wait 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 but then where did that somewhere come from like why not start on earth anyway if it was had to start somewhere why not here brandon jesus <laughs> jesus did it it's all jesus um <clears throat> yeah so cool now for have a good transition the final <laughs> Frontier. I just heard my mom was laughing downstairs. I don't know if the mic picked that up. Uh, the next uh, la- and last piece of news we have involves um, James Webb Space Telescope. So we started Woo-hoo! with the good old classic Hubble, and now we end the news with the new James Webb. There you go. Wearing your right JWST here, t-shirt. Nice. Um, at James Webb Space Telescope has spotted an exoplanet. Uh, and it spotted, it's not the first exoplanet, but, uh, but it, yeah. it's, uh, I think it was the first exoplanet that James Webb has discovered, it discovered this exoplanet. No, we've, uh, as no. opposed to directly image a known planet. No, we, we've, we've known about own. this. We've known about this. We've known about it? Yeah, because <laughs> I, can, I can tell you, um, that is in the digital star system. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so we've, we've known about, about it. it. All right. 
Um, don't change the name of that. What are you doing? No, um, but but it is a. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty big discovery. Yeah, it spots raging dust storms. It's a Jupiter. It's a big Jupiter planet. It's a big hot Jupiter planet. Uh, and uh, basically, it's forty light years away from Earth. Um, it's a super Jupiter, so that means it's fairly similar to Jupiter being like a gas giant. Um, but but it's much bigger. It's twelve to eighteen times the size. Yeah, it's, it's almost it's almost a brown dwarf. I yeah, mean, a brown dwarf being a failed star, essentially. Like it just much, didn't yeah. get it just didn't get quite big enough to become a star. Yeah, and so but what, now it gets its fifteen minutes. <laughs> A star it has become. Yes. All right. Well, th- I'll take a drink to that one. Okay. Uh, mm. I'm sorry, Andy Warhol a reference. Born. A star is born. What? Um, so I said, I said a star is born. Uh, so it's VHS 1256B. My drink. Uh, and it shows signs of water, methane, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. Now, um, not, not a good vacation spot. Uh, the super Jupiter, not not great. It's a harsh, very harsh uh, atmospheres. It has uh, clouds that are filled with these tiny silicate particles that range from specks. Um, Brandon, you are muted. I don't know if you. Are. Oh no, my last couple of jokes fell flat. Oh. <laughs> I just saw the mouth moving. So basically, imagine this swirling hot atmosphere uh, filled with like super hot shards you want me to take this of rocks you want me to take no this? i'm going all right its upper atmosphere can be like 1500 degrees yeah, fahrenheit yeah. which sounds hot but then at the same time it was like or nearly the temperature of a candle flame and i in the article i read oh, and i was like oh that's delightful but that doesn't but it still burns you i know but also yeah but some like it hot it's so it's okay a, <laughs> oh there you okay. go all well, right, so you know, okay, so for this discovery, okay, what they're noticing, I'll take it. Thank you. I asked you, and you're like, no, I'm running. <laughs> All right, so what they noticed was is that this exoplanet mm-hmm. has these um, basically plumes of material, silicate, well, is dust mm-hmm. and all that kind of gas and that type of stuff, but um, dust that the the particles are about the size of like. Um, um, particulates you find in smoke. So okay. it can be mm-hmm. really pretty big. So basically Don't really hot um, plumes of this rise up, um, get to the top of the atmosphere and cool down and then go back down into the planet where it heats up again and then it um, rises to the surface again. Uh, like with a James- lava lamp. Lava lamps, mm-hmm. also with the sun. The sun does this. Mm-hmm. There's a region mm-hmm. of the sun that has mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. Um, big Earth-sized um, little bubbles of gas that rise and stuff. But anyway, mm-hmm. so this is this is transferring heat from the center of the planet up, out to the to the outer atmosphere, mm-hmm. um, and uh, with that comes changes in brightness. And James mm-hmm. Webb Space Telescope is able to actually see that change in brightness. Mm. And so what is amazing about this um, observation is quite a few things. First of all, these observations were made in just a few hours, which tends to be the case for James Webb. Usually, I mean, you need like... Very quick observations and all of that. Um, Also, this is the first time that an exoplanet has had its composition measured like this, where usually it's just like a one-off, like, mm-hmm. okay, it's got a bunch of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But, but now we're measuring in this in an observation of just a couple of hours, methane, water, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. We're getting all that in one observation. We're also measuring the brightness changes uh-huh. in these observations. And the reason why, uh, the reason why this, this planet, this exoplanet, orbits two stars, not one, but two. Yeah, it's a binary star system planet, which yeah. is wild. And it is about four times the distance between um, the sun and Pluto. So it's really far out there. Yeah. And it takes about 10,000 10, years for it to orbit, 10, orbit the sun. 10,000 year, year. Yeah, 10,000 years for it to go around those two stars once. And, um, okay, so if you were that far out, why are you so um, so hot? It's a it's right. a new planet. Yeah. It, it, it's new. This planet, it's young. this new this planet is only about they estimate fifty million 150 years million old. Years our, old. Oh, that's baby star. our planet is four and a half 
billion years yeah. old. This is just that baby. Yeah, it's but we've had some work done, so it looks pretty good. Yeah, and so it's... Yeah, yes. uh, we got a lot of resurfacing happening. <laughs> a lot of Botox. And so eventually... Geologic Botox. As as a lot of this internal heat from this brown dwarf really is what it is, but a lot of this internal heat dissipates through this action, the atmosphere is going to go from this um, uh, murky, uh, opaque atmosphere to a clear atmosphere. Wait, it's going to turn clear? It's going to turn clear. As it's it, as it cools clear? down, as it cools down, it will actually clear out. But that's what is that, what is really that, far down the line. What is that going to look like? Right. So, well, it's going to look like the Earth's atmosphere. I mean, but but thicker. But, Jupiter's atmosphere. Well, okay, Jupiter's probably a better example. Um, okay. It's going to look like Jupiter's atmosphere. Okay, but it's not clear. No, but are you thinking like it's going to look like a glass ball in space? Yeah, but, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but the. <laughs> But all right, so when you look at Jupiter, what are you looking at? You're looking, you're really and truly, like with the Great Red Spot, you're looking deep into the atmosphere, uh -huh. which means that there's a lot of clear atmosphere on top of it. Oh. Uh, you're just looking into the depths. Oh. Um, and so okay. if the Earth's atmosphere were bigger, eventually, um, if, if it was thicker, it would eventually become uh, kind of opaque. And that you wouldn't be able to really see the surface, mm -hmm. you would it would kind of turn blue. What was it like with Venus? I mean, it, it's kind of like yes. that. And so okay. our atmosphere just is not that thick. Yeah. Um, but for this one, it will clear out. It's not like you're going to be able to go, oh, that's the fucking core of that planet. See, that's what I was thinking when you just yeah. said clear. I was like, what's that? Oh, we're going to see the core? It what? Cool. Yeah, no, you're you're going to, because the atmosphere is going to heat up as you uh -huh. go in, into okay, it. Okay. And it's going okay. to have different chemistry and yeah. things like that. And so. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. Our dogs were quiet. Katie just got here. My, Katie my got facial here. reaction you just saw that was because Katie just walked by and I was excited. So, um, <laughs> wow, that's okay. That's cool. that, I'm glad you took I, that over. Cause... I think this is like a really cool discovery. Mm -hmm. And when, um, and this is just a, observation. It, hours of observation. Hours of ob observation. Instead of like years of observations, which is what usually yeah. we require to yeah, get these kind of the data. The astronomers that uh, have been going through this data are like, we're just at the tip of the iceberg with this. And so there actually for VHS 1256B, mm -hmm. there might be more information that comes out. Yeah. It's just that this is the first thing. And this is from just a couple of hours of observation. Wow. This is this is the beauty of James Webb. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, this, uh, this planet being so far out from the two stars mm -hmm. you go around it, James Webb is able to see it. And... The light that comes from that star, mm -hmm. I mean, from that, um, from the exoplanet slash brown dwarf, mm -hmm. is not contaminated by the by the light from the stars, and so you're oh, seeing. So you don't have to block out the starlight. Well, much. it doesn't even need to block it out. Yeah, it that's just, what I said. Yeah. yeah, and so the light that it sees is purely from that purely star, from planet that. light. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not starlight, planet light. And and. The fact that it's so far away uh, from its two stars, which, I mean, seriously, we're not even getting into the fact that it's orbiting two stars. This is yeah, this, I don't uh, without yeah, taking yeah. a drink. This is kind of like, like the, a Star the, Wars the plan. orbital mechanics of that. Well, you can do it. You can do it. So very well, centers. Yeah. So for um, you, all right. So you can orbit. You can orbit one star. Yes. Or like we do. Uh, you do get to a point where it's just like, uh, and then you can orbit both stars and kind of figure eight, but that's really that's a special. very, uh, I mean, it's a very special case okay. situation uh -huh. and it won't last long. It's not a stable orbit, not a stable orbit. but this then you can also, you, you can also be far enough away in this particular mm -hmm. case where the exoplanet goes uh, I, the gravity that I feel is basically, it feels like it's from one star. And so, uh, okay. so it thinks it's just orbiting oh, a single star. star. Yeah, but it's two. Okay, but okay. you have to be pretty far away. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so it's really for these type of situations to see that the planet orbits really close I mean, with to it a being star. so young, then did it form cl closer in and move out? I mean, this is, and these are, I guess these are the questions that they need to look into and study more to, for... You know, I mean, is this the youngest 
planet of this type that has been Oh, that's a good question. I'm not, I, I don't know about that. Yeah. But 150 million years, I mean, it's just twice, really, two and a half times the time between us and when the dinosaurs died out. I mean, it's really... That's not a lot of time. Um, so, let's see. Uh, the, unit, the Earth is about four and a half billion years old. So, you're talking about... Uh, the Earth is something, um, I'm just going to say, 30 times the age of this exoplanet. Um, this is a very new exoplanet. It's very like, hot like because great, from... Like great-grandparents. That com- yeah, that comes from the... Oh, we're not even grandparents. We are... There are many greats that happen. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so this is... This is wow. The reason t- Mike would like have the spot on 28 times. That's why he's a fancy yeah. business man. He can do the math. <laughs> Thanks for... Checking me? <laughs> no, I, no, seriously, thanks. I had a drink. Um, it was a strong drink, too. Um, and, you know, it's, um, the reason why this is so hot is because it's so young. And it, it's just going to cool down. And, I mean, you're always young, hotter when you're young. And it, I mean, it's really cool. And James Webb has only been going for a year. Uh, uh, not not even a year. It, not yet. Not even a year. Phase by you is. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> And James Webb is going to rewrite our astronomy textbooks. Like Hubble rewrote our astronomy textbooks, oh, Pearson's gonna be James so Webb is going to do it as well. I like the idea of the, the James Webb there, the giant telescope, has a tiny pen and is like keeping diary <laughs> notes and writing a book. Today, I saw... Today, I discovered VHS 1256B. I call him Frank. <laughs> All right, bring I us home. It would be nice to me if I get to meet him. <laughs> Bring us home. You have a sister to see. All right. Before we do, Before the, hangover. We do the hangover. Yes. Well, uh, so we uh, are heading into spring. Again, you can check out those springtime constellations. Lyra, Bootes, Arcturus in Bootes. The brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, mm-hmm. setting in the west in Canis Major. Minor, major. What were you going to say? Canis what? <laughs> I said minor, but I meant major. major. I can't. All right. All right, I haven't even Canis finished. Venus Miger. I, <laughs> I haven't even finished my drink yet. That's why it's Cosmos with Cosmos. Uh, so uh, check us out on all the things at Drinking Cosmos on Twitter and Cosmos with Cosmos everywhere else. We're on your Spotify's. We're on your Google on podcasts. All on Excellent. all the things. Uh, listen to us and watch us. And uh, you yeah, know. What, and what's the topic for next time? Oh my gosh, we, we don't, don't know. No, <laughs> are you going to be here in two weeks? I don't know. We're we're in flux because uh, we're we, in flux. Brandon's in flux. Everybody's in flux. So we're yeah. just we're going off so, the top of our pants. In all so honesty, thanks for bearing for... with us because uh, two weeks ago we really needed to get our stuff out of Utah, and so two weeks ago? what? Yeah, I think it was yeah, two it was weeks two ago. Weeks ago. Um, we're so officially... I really appreciate all of that. Um, <laughs> there might be another one where we have to either miss it or let Brandon actually run the whole thing. Uh, because we might be no, moving. He, can't. he but, doesn't have um, a setup for the streaming. And stuff. So thank you. And, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know what the topic's going to be in two weeks. It really kind of depends on, on if Brandon's available because uh, his availability has a lot to do with uh, topics that we go down because we were thinking about doing uh, manned or crewed at, uh, space exploration um, today, uh, but that's, we that's weren't entirely jam, sure. So right? yeah. He needs to be, away yeah, that. yeah. He needs to be cognizant for that. But uh, either yeah. way, you know, follow us I and we'll let you know. My luggage. Be I, know. Yes. <laughs> I was going to make a comment uh-huh. on that, but I. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Well, there. <laughs> nice. Ah. nice. I love the the, the space shuttle uh, slippers right there. That's oh, great. yes, yes, yes. That's great. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're if you're with us here live, or if you're uh, watching this uh, on YouTube or listening on on a, a podcast platform, you can uh, check out the hangover of this show on YouTube, or stick around if you're with us now, uh, because uh, we'll be right back with that. But All for right. now, thanks cool. for joining us. And we'll see you next time, everybody. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks.